And Atul ji always knew me as happy. So, in fact, I remember once I had gone to meet him when he was prime minister. I sent him a note with my name, Pius Goel. And for about half an hour or forty minutes, I was waiting outside his office. Soon as I walked into the room, he says, "Are you happy, Tomo?" He, मुझे बताया क्यों नहीं? I said, "I sent you a chit," and he says, "Pius Goel, who is he?" He was that loving kinds and रात को दो तीन बजे कभी meetings करके big campaigns in Hollywood come home. मैं पाँव दबाता था, हाथ दबाता था. Can I be your hype man? Oh, sure, sure, sir. <laughs> so let's look for seeing you as the most successful YouTuber oh, in the country, thanks. if not the world. Thank you. Or the first YouTuber which is to politics and gets mentored by Piyush Goel to that like. That is an interesting proposition. <laughs> you got me there. So let's go for Mr. Alabadia joining politics soon. Uh, I will say something slightly spicy in the end. I won't be surprised if at some point. You know we okay okay cool. <laughs> Another epic episode of TRS is here. This one is the first ever political interview that we're releasing on the Ranveer Show. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. This is with Cabinet Minister Piyush Goyal ji. This was a lot of fun because honestly, he came down to my level and spoke to me. Spoke to me. not like a cabinet minister but kind of like a big brother you know what i mean when you watch the entire podcast my intention with political podcast is to make it unpolitical is to talk about development is to talk about the future of india and most importantly it's to talk about the human behind the cabinet minister many more cabinet minister interviews are coming up thanks to trs in association with my gov make sure you stay tuned for all our upcoming episodes lots of cool stuff coming up but for now ladies and gentlemen this is shri piyush goyal minister of industries and commerce giving his first ever podcast to yours truly this one was fun you're going to have fun and you're going to learn a lot so make sure you watch it once again after you watch it for the first time because there's a lot to learn from a political life Piyush Goyal sir how are you top of the world i'm very excited about this particular conversation me too i i didn't know so much about your podcast till recently and it looks to be an exciting format no well, i'm very excited to be having this conversation with you cuz i have often seen you on television schooling some people uh, and schooling is always an outcome of a lot of data and experience every episode i do a lot of research and i can never bring up research points but i can read between the lines of my research uh the one thing that stuck out is do you watch cricket by any chance a little bit in the earlier days now okay. we don't get the time i would like to call you a bit of an all rounder in this political world you handled so many different ministries done so many different things actually that was a great opportunity because you learn so much you know when you're moved around in uh, areas which are technical like power and Uh, renewable energy was very exciting when you're looking at sustainability and the new age energy sources i got a brief uh, stint uh, in finance which was uh, great learnings also ran the railways which was a unique experience the largest employer in the country after the army and the paramilitary forces so i think everywhere i gained a lot i learned a lot how do you begin <laughs> like how does the studying begin say you're given a new ministry are you do you study for it like where do you no, start no we don't know we are, we get to know as uh, the day starts you get to know that you're now going to be looking after this ministry but i think the trick of the trade is the first two let tell all my colleagues is forget everything we've done in the past don't ever tell me this is how we used to do it we look at everything afresh I learn you relearn okay can i shift gears now anywhere are you happy in life i love it yeah what's the best and worst things about your life well i can tell you that i have two wonderful kids and a fantastic wife who looks after me and my kids like anything and nothing could be greater than that because mm. uh, that's kept us all together she's made sure the kids study well make a mark in life 
are respected. She's kept the dignity of the family. So all that has been the best thing that happened to me. But of course, this opportunity to work in government for nine years, it's probably the best thing that could have happened to me. It's something I always wanted right from childhood. Not coming into government or becoming a minister, but wanting to give back. It was ingrained in me at a very young age and I think there can be no better medium than politics or public life to give back to society. But then it's all worth it because every decision is affecting the country's growth in some way. In some sense... Uh, not necessarily every decision, but you take a lot of decisions which can impact large part of the country, often even beyond. And that satisfaction is to die for. Mm. Really, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I've always craved and the reason why I wanted to be in politics and the satisfaction you get, let's say, when the Prime Minister announces that in COVID, we're going to give double the normal food grain to 80 crore people, free of cost, so that not a single child sleeps hungry. And you get an opportunity to actually run that program on his behalf, mm. under his guidance. It's so satisfying, I can't tell you. Do you think of the spiritual side of what you do, influencing so many lives at the same time through your work? I am spiritual. I'm very religious also. I believe destiny decides for a lot of things for us and uh, clearly if I'm able to do good for a large set of people particularly our brother Indians brother and sisters from our homeland it is a lot of satisfaction okay no there, doubt. there's this urban legend uh, which says that you were mentored by Atal Vihari Vajpayee and LK Advani when you were a child because your parents also from the world of politics is it true that you got coached when you were a kid I won't call it coaching, but it's a very natural transition in your life. I could have been like any other kid, you know, going to school, playing games, enjoying life. But due to the family background, we had this constant flow of uh, senior leaders coming and staying with us at home and you gradually become close to them. Uh, the other day I was remembering in another program, that Mr. Vajpayee used to come and stay at my home even before I was born. But one of those, and but he was a very shy person. He was never very open and chatty and meeting up with people in the home. He would come like a guest, stay and go away. But one day in the afternoon, I was playing marbles to myself. I was all alone. Uh, we had a wall-to-wall -wall carpet, so... It was easy to play marbles and that. And I was trying to hit a marble barely three or four feet away. And I was very bad at sports. Always bad at sports. Any sort. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we do so many podcasts today. <laughs> to make up for that void on the inside. <laughs> That's why we take up so many ministries. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm kidding. And he came in. And you know, he was nice and uh, big. In a lungi, he came in. He plumped himself on a puffy there. He took the marble from me and something stick to your mind. He used the small finger. I still remember it, like as if it happened yesterday. And with this small finger on his knee, the thumb, and he goes eight feet away, bang, hits the marble. <laughs> and I think I became his fan that day. <laughs> it was a day which made him very close to me. We started chatting with each other. There were times when people used to say that he's refusing to do a program, Piyush. Now you have to go and get him to do it. In fact, he didn't know my name till, till, he, was, till he became Prime Minister. He only knew me with my pet name. He just didn't know who Piyush Goel is. What was your pet name? Happy. Okay. okay. Just, that also just was checking. kept by somebody uh, who would come home from within our RSS circles. And he saw me as a child in the cradle and he said oh he's so happy we should call him happy so my name became happy and until he always knew me as happy so in fact I remember once I had gone to meet him when he was prime minister I sent him a note with my name Piyush Goyal Benton and for about half an hour or 40 minutes I was waiting outside his office 
And after 30, 40 minutes, I said, if he's not called me, maybe I, I should go. So I told his secretary that, look, I, I'm leaving now. I must say, got surprised that somebody has got an appointment to come and meet the Prime Minister and he's walking away without meeting. So he said, give me a moment. He went in, came out. He said, you are been called inside. Soon as I walked into the room, he says, are you happy? Tomo. <laughs> he Mujhe batai kyu nahi? I said, I sent you a chit. <laughs> and he says, Piyush Goel kone? <laughs> So he he was that loving kinds and raat ko do teen baje kabi meetings karke big campaigns in Hollywood come home me paon da baata tha haat da baata tha he used to really tire himself out and you know those days there were no luxuries you had to travel in a non air conditioned Fiat car driving hundred two hundred kilometers to do public meetings late into the night come home so he used to be really tired and in pain. But he would always ask, how's the family? Tum kya kar rahe ho? School mein kya ho rahe? Bhar kya log bolte hai? Bhar kya baate sunte ho? School mein baaki bachche kya bolte hai? He always was very keen to have a feedback. What the young people are saying. What I hear outside. What other people who come home are saying. So it was, it became a beautiful relationship. Almost till the end. And I think uh, those memories are really Something I'll carry with me all through my life. What was his most special human trait that gave him that kind of a legacy, according to you? He was very, very humanitarian. He believed that this country deserves better, that we can do so much more for the nation. He was a poet at heart, always. In fact, uh, I remember once he comes home in the afternoon and gives me a diary in which he had probably penned down some poetry in the journey to Mumbai. And he gives it to me and he says, Ye padho. And he left it with me. Now, Atilji as a poet was not one of those who used to always rhyme his sentences. And I don't know about you, but what we learned about poetry in school was, you have to rhyme. You have to rhyme and then say dime or whatever. It has to rhyme. You say school and then you use another word which rhymes with school. Maybe fool. Yeah. But his poetry was not rhyming. So when he came back in the night, I said, Chacha ji, I should call him Chacha ji. Chacha ji, what is this? So I could not understand it. I said, his Hindi is so high flying. I could not understand it. And he took it from me, <laughs> just uh, kept it aside. But it was, it was that lovely relationship where uh, I could tell him that. Mm. But did you notice any fiery tiger style leader in him at all? Was there anything that gave that away? Or it was all on the inside? He wasn't very fiery. He was a very fun-loving, simple man. Very simple life he led. Okay. But a deep thinker. I know that he used to be thinking very, very much about the nation, about what's happening in the country, what could be done better. He was always concerned that the people deserve better. And I think his unfinished agenda, frankly, Prime Minister Modi has taken forward very, very ably. And I get a chance to work with Mr. Modi and to contribute a little bit is a matter of great satisfaction. Do you think you become better with age as a leader? I think different people have different experiences. And within each person, you have both the good and the bad. So maybe some of your habits don't die. And with age, they get worse. Mm. But you also mature with age. You also sober down with age. You also start becoming more wiser or compassionate with age. So it's a mixed bag. Like probably the one thing that increases for everyone is empathy or compassion. Probably. Not necessarily for everyone. I hope it would increase for everyone. The world would be a better place to live in. Certainly it has in me. Today also when I recount that uh, Mr. Modi is the first Prime Minister who thought of our sisters, our mothers, our daughters not having a toilet to go to. Half the country didn't have toilets until hmm. 2014. Yep. Now, so many governments came and went. Nobody thought about a simple thing like a toilet. And here you have a Prime Minister who spends 
nearly 20 billion dollars just building toilets for the mm. poor but imagine what a great matter of satisfaction it is to all of us that we protected the dignity of our uh, women folk yeah. it's a small thing people ridiculed him when he talked about cleanliness swachh abhiyan swachh bharat abhiyan uh, on 15th august 2014 but today we realize the game changing dimensions that it has I think in the long term Swachh Bharat is also going to have a role to play in travel, which is then going to unlock even much, yeah, like, so much sure, more money. That's sure. the big complaint we've had even on the show in terms of if all of India was just more hygienic, you'd attract a lot of people from all over the world to see our beautiful country, and there's so much to see. But is this whole tourism in order to make money a conversation that you guys have? I'll give you a small example that will tell you all. Sure. You heard of the Statue of Unity? Yeah. In Kevadia, yeah. yes, Gujarat. Sir. Yes, sir. The monument in honor of uh, Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel, which Prime Minister Modi built. But when I first went and saw it, it's a it's a absolutely scintillating experience. Just can't get over it. The museum, the whole facilities, the whole ecosystem that's developing around it. I'd gone actually to. Uh, do the bhumi pujan the uh, ground breaking ceremony for a railway station to bring rail connectivity which we did in a record time to the statue of unity when i came back i went to meet him and i was telling him how much i enjoyed uh, visiting the place you know the narmada dam in the background with water behind it uh, it's just truly uh, awe inspiring So while I was talking to him, I said, "Sir, I can see that we could possibly have a one lakh crore ecosystem around it, with tourists coming in, and we can create facilities and all." So he looks up at me, and he says, "Do you think I've just created a statue?" Obviously, the whole intention is that we create the whole ecosystem. It's a tribal area. People will benefit. People will get work. People will get jobs. We'll have millions of tourists come in over there. Mm. we'll transform that whole area and believe me today we have millions of tourists going there a year both national and international you can't go to the top because it's full packed the whole day getting a seat onto the lift to go up is very very mm. difficult unless you book in advance which is all of course technologically enabled online but you can spend 3 or 4 days there and enjoy the whole experience and i realized that prime minister modi was actually thinking three or four steps ahead of what any of us imagined when we were all talking about the statue mm. of unity gotcha. similarly when you look at banaras i don't know did you get a chance to go to banaras i have so we recorded a lot of videos there recently yes with the new temple yes complex yes, yes so my god if have you seen it before uh, i have actually yeah. so you can see the dimensions of change yeah. there yeah. now i i recently was told that the number of people who visit that temple is now 10x mm. and it's been only a short period of time a year and a half now this way it's going i think we can set up probably 50 or 100 hotels in banaras yeah and it will fall short yeah um it's a bit of a rudimentary question but i get this question from a lot of my white friends and my friends from africa and arab friends they ask a lot about the jungles the beaches and the mountains So, is this also something you guys focus on developing? Of course, it's biodiversity at its best okay. in India. When the world is talking about sustainability, we have always believed in sustainability. How do you convince the common man to be even more hygienic? I think that's the main kind of problem right now. You know, it comes very naturally. You don't need to do much. Just keep the place clean for a few days. Okay. Nobody will ever dirty. Okay. In this room. will you dare to or you will you even think of throwing something on the ground you won't but if there was a small pile of garbage there while walking out you wouldn't have minded a piece of paper or a tissue paper you wouldn't because it's already looks like a garbage dump the idea is we have to get the place cleaned up once maintenance of cleanliness is not very expensive okay. human being intrinsically likes cleanliness yeah. tell me even the poorest of poor in the village also he keeps his own village his heart his uh, his surroundings very clean you yeah. i feel there was a lot of wrong things that happened because of colonialism in india systems were messed up lots of things were messed up 
and over the last 75 years we've been cleaning up the mess and now it's that final 20% that's left you know where we're trying to undo mindsets be it in education be it even about hygiene i don't think traditionally we're unhygienic i think it's i don't know how it's gotten introduced but it's my theory something's gone on there maybe it's a conspiracy theory i don't know well i wouldn't get down to conspiracies on this but yes i think there was a vested interest in keeping india uneducated keeping india unorganized mm. making sure the indians don't start knowing about the good things of life and i that that was a systematic effort over hundreds of years jo gulami ki mansikta ki baat hoti hai and i think uh, prime minister modi all of us are very very focused that we have to get rid of that colonial mindset yes in a simple thing like even our graduation ceremonies we don't that may be good for the winter uh, months of the developed world but i don't see any reason to have that gown mm. with the cap and all in this heat of india yeah i think we normally graduate in may april may june that period right yes, sir. we'd rather have a nice kurta pajama <laughs> or uh, angavastra to graduate in and gradually i see a lot of universities and colleges are doing that so as a youtuber i represent the youth primarily that's my main demographic and it's gradually changing because people like yourself are appearing on my show uh i got to share something i have learned we have a hindi channel as well which we started 5 years ago can i interrupt sure I mean, you are pretending you are a youth. What about me? I'm very old. He's <laughs> just an elder brother kind of youth figure. <laughs> okay, I thought you're almost making a father figure out of no, me. No, 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 not at all. You're a big brother figure. Is that is that okay? Okay, fine. Uh, so you get a top-down view of people through data on YouTube, and especially if you upload a lot of videos, you know what people are watching. You know what people are interested in. On a Hindi channel, it's almost now become difficult to create content. for the common man because they're getting that much smarter and this wasn't the case in uh, 2016 when the whole geo boom happened when we had just begun you had to start off content from the abc's and now they're writing full fledged essays and in some cases the hindi content is uh, of a higher level than the english content because i feel urban audiences kind of reject a lot of conversation if it comes out of a brown person but hindi speaking audiences lap it up because they feel relatability so i want to ask you from your macro perspective because you're literally running the country here what's changed you know try to think of it how many people in india really speak english it's a very small population which is conversant with english we believe that in south everybody speaks english it's not so it's the elite and a small section of uh, southern india which speaks english and of course a se- certain section across the country but if i remember the last census figures whereas english was the natural language for nearly 70 odd percent people english was not even in double digits so i think it's a uh, it's very natural that the hindi speaking audiences are going to be more demanding and uh, i'm sure all of you youtubers will be better off also <laughs> yeah meeting the needs of the hindi speaking audience what are you excited about from the youth perspective of the country like where we're going in the next 10 years i'm excited about entrepreneurship i think that's going to take off a lot more but clearly and because startup india mission was launched by prime minister modi in 2016 and it's housed in my ministry here uh, i see exactly what's happening we have 100000 startups today registered yeah. my uh, mine's yeah. a part of startup wonderful well, congratulations thank you sir we have over 100 unicorns hmm. you are one in the making yeah one in the making and uh, i see the dynamism of the youth when i connect with them meet with them all over the country it's so exciting it's so rejuvenating to connect with them having said that i think uh, youtubers are also playing a very important social role your focus on hygiene for example today is music to my ears seven or eight shows like this on different youtube channels you will get the youth also connected and thinking about it i don't know whether the youth today since they have not had to face many of the difficulties that you know at my age or my parents age they had to face for example electricity now youth today doesn't know what it is like to live without electricity mm. my father did mm. he didn't have electricity in his home he would study under a street lamp 
maybe by the time your father or my or i and my son or you came into no adulthood we didn't have to face the kind of difficulties mr modi had to face as a child or our earlier generations had to. the struggles of the partition for example now a lot of lessons we can learn from history and youtubers like you actually are playing that social role and very very important contribution to society that when you propagate the past the present you generate hope for the future hmm. and i think that aspirational india the 140 crore indians today with their basic needs largely taken care of aspiring for all the good things of life that they see on internet that they see on your show that they see on television that's what is driving india okay. that's going to supercharge the future of india just do more of what we're doing that's basically do lots more okay how do we work with the government to just help you guys how do influencers like social media folks help you guys more to take the country further don't help the government help the country okay your job is to take care of the country's interests and then you'll automatically be helping us you'll be helping everybody like entrepreneurship again no now let me put it this way first of all we need to generate the confidence in our people every indian should feel confident that together we can make india a developed nation now imagine if 10 of you at different forums talk about bold big measures that we are all going to take together to make india a prosperous nation it will it will rub off on others got gotcha. you it'll excite people to do more okay integrity and a corruption free india mm. suppose more and more of you talk about it giving a bribe is worse if you ask me than the guy who's asking for it make your voice vocal speak about it speak up against such people okay let's get the youth of india encourage them to fight against corruption let's encourage the youth of india to go in for skills mm. rather than just degrees okay let's let's pass on the message that there's no work which is demeaning you know you you'll have a bill gates son or daughter working in a mcdonald in america mm. there's dignity of labor if we can spread the word of dignity of labor got gotcha. you i can continue on and on but believe me government cannot do everything mm. we'll all, we are all in it together mm. and if we are all going to align ourselves keeping only one basic fundamental in mind that we are not going to fall prey to misinformation we are not going to become proponents of misinformation we are not going to start trying to appease a section of society or dividing society we going to be trying to get everybody connected and connected with hope for the future with confidence for the future okay no power on earth can stop okay. india my friend okay i carry the word of the common man when if you talk to like you know say an auto rickshaw driver and if i had to tell him that i am interviewing politicians on my show one of the first reactions is are sab corrupt hote hain you know it's like a very common like stereotype how much do you have to face this where people make assumptions about you guys and and how true is it like how how murky is your world i'm asking a very raw question here well every field has its uh, good and bad uh, moments and good and bad attributes there will be a few black sheep in every profession hmm you can't wish them away obviously you desire that they're not successful and they don't succeed in their ways but uh, we see all around us whether it's in business whether it's in politics whether it's in the bureaucracy so much so that it could be in every walk of life including technology world yeah right so when, when an e-commerce site let's say uses an algorithm and guides customers choice towards one direction whoever gives them the highest uh, premium or highest commission i think that's as uh, wrong mm. as is somebody else cheating uh, the public in another way yeah so i think in every walk of life there'll be the good there'll be the bad and there'll be the ugly life is not black and white my friend several shades areas. of gray yeah okay and i think all of us should make our sincerest attempt to work towards 
priority to work towards white and it's very much possible i've been in government 9 years and i have the courage of conviction to say that i didn't have to stray even once okay and i was able to take decisions boldly i was able to take decisions which were at times very impactful at times could be misunderstood but and very often if not always criticized by the opposition but as prime minister modi has given us that confidence we have to stay the course yeah we have to be self confident we have to believe in our abilities our commitment and our integrity but so then the pathway is very very easy yeah. the question wasn't in any means a jibe at you it was just like no, a i appreciate like politicians have earned themselves a lot of ill will i think mr modi is set out to try and improve things yeah. uh i was asking you that question from the perspective of people my age wanting to get into politics and then fearing the shark pool so tell us a little bit about the first steps in that shark pool when you first came on the show and did this podcast i'm sure you must have been a little fearful also yeah back in the day second yeah. time kept getting better it's the same thing okay everybody who desires to serve in public life will have a little bit of trepidation some fears some concerns and i tell you it's the honest people who are always more scared it's not the dishonest who's worried it's the honest who's worried and i respect that worry and but i still believe we need lots and lots of good people coming into public life you know i don't know if by the time you learned computers this was being taught at all but when i learned computers one of the first things they would teach us is garbage in garbage out <laughs> computer is only processing whatever you feed it mm. politics is somewhat like that if we were all good people willing to engage with politics willing to get involved willing to work despite a lot of adversity we can truly transform the okay. future of india what's the big... i invite you to go join politics <laughs> uh, maybe maybe if i find Why a mentor not? if i find a mentor you know you never i had this... i am happy to offer myself really absolutely if you are willing to look at society look at your brothers and sisters in india 140 crore indians as your responsibility as people you care for as people whose lives matter to you i think you love being in politics you can really contribute two questions one i know that anyone in the world of politics is a very sharp reader of people so you've read something and i want to know what you've read in me to what is the basic skill set you actually need like there has to be some sort of basic potential energy there like kohli the first time he picked up a bat probably hit the ball well so what's the basic skill set i think uh, first of all when it comes to you i i think uh, your honesty shows and you have a smile which is infectious and in politics both are very important really very important like your look yeah, not your look your connect Okay. Well, looks don't give you a smile. A smile has to come from within. Mm. And what people want are happy people. What people want are people who care for them. What people want are uh, is somebody who's empathetic to them, compassionate to them. You can do good politics, believe me. As can a lot of youngsters I come across these days, and I'm finding this increasingly becoming an area of choice for many youngsters. at the same time continue your profession okay delve in politics learn the ropes but continue your professional career so that politics is not the means to an end gotcha politics should be your passion until you have enough for your family and your needs so that you can get full time into politics okay. which is why i am able to do politics today because i spent 30 years in the business world and am today self sufficient same way i think uh, you don't need any great skill sets you need to be true to yourself and the skill sets you pick up along the way oratory for example usually you associate politics with oratory i can tell you i know so many politicians who were absolutely poor orators some almost till the end of their political career but their sincerity pulled them through some who picked up oratory along the line 
So, your connect with people comes with your from your heart. Your connect with people comes from your concern for them, your attitude to them, your being approachable to them, and naturally, people get drawn to somebody whom they trust. You have to earn their trust. That's politics. What can go wrong in this journey? Ego. Well, ego certainly can go can make you uh, too big for your boots, and that's something one has to be very very cautious about. Remaining grounded is very important. Uh, good point you've picked up, my friend. What can also go wrong, go wrong sometimes is circumstances. It can happen. Luck. I don't know so much about luck. Possibly yes. Possibly somewhat destiny. But sometimes circumstances also can go wrong. Can be misunderstood. Something may happen because of which you are even wrongly or falsely in trouble. All of those things can happen. Yeah. Those are the risks of every profession. Okay. And uh, I think in business also people fail. It's not that they wanted to fail when they got into it. It's not that they cheated or they did wrong, but circumstances sometimes create a problem. Okay. So I think it's uh, there's no guarantee of success in anything, but certainly no guarantee that you'll fail also. Hmm. So give it a shot. Okay, okay. This is the first time I've ever realistically thought of this because on the show we've often spoken about how the way content creation is going, the capturing. I mean, I'm saying this. It is like me blowing my trumpet, but. Content creators are capturing huge masses of people. So at some point, at least a few of the content creators will want to shift to the world of politics and make a difference to the country in another way. That'll be wonderful. It's not a crazy thought, right? Not at all. In fact, I okay. would encourage you to invite people to come and maybe approach you. There are so many opportunities. In my office, for example, we have a lot of interns. We have a lot of young professionals, some of whom were here before the show started. We have a lot of them who would do very well in the private sector, in their business life, in the service. But they want to experience what public life is. They want to experience what working in government is, what public policy is all about. Right. How laws are framed, how government thinks. And it's a very interesting experience. Uh, I would look at the entire cabinet as a bit of a team. PM Modi being a bit of a captain. How do you describe your own team? And I'd also definitely love to ask you, Keeping sports in mind, comparing it to sports, sports has L's as well, losses. So if there's ever anything that goes wrong, how what is the process? Like, do you all regroup and like talk about like a mistake? Like, do you all like what's the process to become better? See, uh, very often the important part is the planning aspect. How well you've thought through a thing before you've implemented it. And if you have really looked at a project in full detail, you normally don't go wrong so easily. But yes, there can be mishaps. You can go wrong on some project or the other. And uh, you have to have the big heart or the gumption to accept it and move forward. Very often you have to take a back step back also if you've gone wrong. And uh, I don't think that's very unnatural. It's, in fact, if you, if you feel you've never gone wrong, then that's something unnatural. Does it psychologically bother you guys at all when the internet acts the way it does if something goes wrong? When people are like throwing arrows, etc, etc. I think over a, initially it does. Over a period of time, you learn to accept some of it as hazards of the job. What pains you only is when it's motivated or based on complete falsehood. It does hurt you a little bit. Okay. That, you know, this is not what it is. This is not the truth. This is not what it was ever intended to be. Yes, that's not easy to accept. Okay. But otherwise, there are times when we have to take it in the spirit. There are times when you realize that everything hunky-dory and everything good may also not be very exciting for the mm. world of internet and social media. And like a little spice. So you will have to face yeah. flack. Fear and negativity uh, spreads faster. Uh, I have to ask you, are you thinking about the 2030s and 40s? Like, do you think, do you visualize that number? Like, I visualize it on a personal level and I think of where social media is going, where the internet is going. I can't imagine how you guys think of those coming decades. Well, I for one am convinced that 
India is on a roll. What we have in India is unmatched with any other part of the world. We have a democracy, rules-based government, decisive leadership. We are transparent in our operations, which many other countries which have developed in the recent past are not. And the world today is looking up both to India and India's leadership. Look at the kind of accolades Prime Minister Modi is getting wherever he goes. Have you ever heard of an Indian leader being called boss? Mm. Or the world's most loved leader by the Italian Prime Minister? Some of the kind of comments the, the US Commerce Secretary the other day on a public platform was commenting on Prime Minister Modi's deep knowledge of technology. What's the geopolitical angle here? Why are they doing this? Well, I think uh, A, they can see India as a very, very important emerging power in Asia, which is the hotbed of a lot of uh, serious concern. B, for the first time after many years, they're seeing India with an absolute majority government and a strong, decisive leader who's leading 1.4 billion people to becoming aspirational Indians, asking for all the good things of life, which means there's going to be demand in mm. India. There's going to be a big market. So they see a big business opportunity. They see a big investment opportunity. We in India also need that investment to be able to grow. We ourselves are looking to make India a 35, 40 trillion dollar economy. We ourselves want to see that the most basic infrastructure across the country should be available to all. Every young child born in India should have access to clean water, electricity, a good home, a family which has healthcare, which has education, all the basic infrastructure of connectivity around them, digital connectivity, uh, physical connectivity. And with skills, contributing to a better tomorrow for India. Okay. Now, this kind of an India is possible. And with the relentless pace with which India is growing, next four or five years, seven years down the road, I see an India which will be like driving the world. We will be in the driver's seat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I have large hopes from the world of entrepreneurship. Again, I just, I think that people don't know what's coming at them. You talk to Gen Z's, people born after 1997-98, just very different mindset. Much larger scale thought. So good times are coming, at least that's the optimist in me uh, believing so. And I think you're an optimist. And I love that optimism. <laughs> Keep it up. Never let it die. No, for sure. You're very entrepreneurial. But I've gotten to know that after having this conversation with you. Like there's actually an entrepreneur in you. And I think that's a part of the reason you've been given these ministries. Because in some ways, they are the ones that fetch a lot of money for people in the country and for the country in general. Do you think that's played a role? Your investment banking it has past? hugely. I mean, right from uh, the first day when I took charge in power or renewable energy and coal, I think both my education, the chartered accountancy and law that I learned as a student, my setting up a factory as an entrepreneur and a small scale unit at that. My, the project costs of my factory way back uh, in the early 80s was only 19 lakh 80 thousand rupees mm. project cost and the capital for that came from my father's pension which he commuted his superannuation funds you know the pension the provident fund gratuity leave and cashment mm. that you get after 30 years of service that became my capital which he was kind enough to give me with which I started my small scale industry all those lessons that I learned in the first 20 years of my life, running an industry, growing it from a small scale to a mid scale, the labor trouble I went through, the banking crisis I went through, all of that helped me learn all of which is coming in good use today. Mm -hmm. My investment banking stint of 14, 15 years helped me learn the, learn, learn the world of finance, understand business, understand uh, importance of uh, good ma management practices. And I think collectively, this experience is my biggest asset today. Okay. Uh, 
you're a lot of fun to talk to as well <laughs> like i'm able to flow with you i don't know whether it's a bombay connect i think it's just two bosco boys like connecting a little bit <laughs> so uh i'm having a lot of fun talking to you i'm learning from you uh there's a basic question i've had that i wanted to ask you from the start of this conversation mainly for the 13 year olds watching this podcast studying civics what is a day in the life of a cabinet minister like is it a full barrage of like problems and strategy thrown at you because there's no way you know how a train exactly works even though you're a railway minister so there's got to be experts around you wherever there's experts there's problems that's what i'm assuming and there's just a constant stream of tasks you know you have uh, a lot of personal life also so don't ever imagine that we are just like machines really so my morning tea with my wife with almonds and uh, fruit and the news with the, 20 different newspapers and the television blaring away is a must do can't start the day without that fortunately for me uh, and i think your viewers or listeners will also be commenting on my voice i've had a throat problem all my life probably hereditary in some sense but during covid it used to be probably worse and uh, one day sitting with the honorable prime minister he said you want to sort out your problem i said of course and he says you got to do yoga <laughs> and uh, i still remember it was 16th of july 2020 going to be 3 years now he got me hooked on to yoga really pranayam and it's really been a game changer for me even as a professional it's probably benefited you yes because while you are doing all those asanas and pranayam and all you don't have any other time to think about anything else you're just following the instruct intra, instructors uh, directions so it gives you a little bit of a peaceful time that kind of meet my time mm. you know and um, post yoga i'm a little religious as i told you i would have ideally like to say my prayers but it's always difficult to catch that in the morning then you are on the work trail then you are on a crazy schedule and for, for that's how? where i mess up i mean my lunch is at 5 o'clock in the evening sometimes dinner would be you i just sat dinner before the show because i've got to go back home and technically on antibiotics and mm. uh, if i if i didn't had that dinner i would probably not be going back home tonight mm. okay. so it's a natural family life like anybody else's but during the day it's a lot of work to catch up on lot of public engagements lot of meeting of people when parliament is in session you are busy with parliament you are traveling very extensively throughout other parts of the country even internationally all of that is work but then i don't sleep without saying my prayers wherever possible i'll do my treadmill before i sleep if it's too late in the night i'll at least walk for about 45 minutes and now you can start listening to podcasts on the treadmill i say i listen to bhajans on the treadmill okay okay so uh, that also i made as a routine so that way i have to do it you know gotcha. it's made sure that i do my treadmill every day okay because i'm listening to the bhajans gotcha and uh, before i sleep almost every night thanks to covid there's a habit i picked up in covid and it's been a great habit we watch one episode of any serial on the ott platform uh very chilling very relaxing we watch some wonderful stuff uh, on television my wife and i my kids are out so just the two of us it's it's our chill out time but you sleep very peacefully mm. because you kind of got over the whole day's work you enjoyed uh, about 30 minutes or 40 minutes of television I have just concluded the rocket boys uh-huh. and I think that's that's a lovely day well spent before you get up the next morning. Do you look back at your entire political career as having one difficult phase? Is there some difficult phase you look back to and you're like okay that was challenging and character building. Is there anything like that? Yeah, you have those you have those <laughs> times. You have those If times. you highlight it it'll be picked up by marketing agencies who'll use it against you, right? like that's what i'm assuming it will involve personalities and it goes back so far behind 
and most of them are in any case not here so it doesn't make sense okay. to discuss okay as you carry your career forward you get better with the media right because that's what happens in a youtuber's life for sure well that's for the media to judge really. <laughs> you get you're getting better with the media <laughs> okay okay fine fair uh this is why i'm saying i'm having fun talking to you uh what i will say I think we're almost at the end of this particular episode. So, how was your first podcasting experience? It's actually the first. I've never done it before, and uh, doing it with a kid. If I'm a I'm thirty, so I'm all, I'm going to turn thirteen two days. But you have it's, to it's, grey your hair a little bit or something to look like thirty. It's all the yoga. <laughs> it's you all do the yoga, also? yeah, yeah, lots. Oh wow! I listen to bhajans on the treadmill. Not on the treadmill, but I listen to bhajans in the morning, my shower. I listen to. Bajrang Ban, if like that, that's something you're familiar with. Wow. Any? No, no. I listen to Aditya Riddhi Stotra and uh, Durga. Oh, Piyush Goel, sir. Thank you. This was fun. Thank you. It was really wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful meeting you. Likewise. And wish you all the very best. Thank Do well in life. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, just learning from you guys. This was my first true political podcast. Couldn't have asked for a better guest. Uh. I hope to talk to you for a longer chat at some point in the future. Uh, I will say something slightly spicy in the end. I won't be surprised if at some point, you know, we okay, okay, cool. <laughs> I won't say that then. I will just say thank you, and I really appreciate thank it. Thank you, and all the best, and yes. look forward to meeting you yeah. again. There's there's a character kind of thing that. friends used to describe me it's called hype man i'm a hype man i say yeah you got it so pardon uh, this last bit is me just being my natural form as a hype man so otherwise you were nervous no 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 hype man is uh, hey you you're going to be a billionaire you you're you're going to be the opening batsman for india that's hype man wow and that's ev- every group needs that uh, so you know the kids who don't get a hype man around them growing up have to be the one hype man <laughs> the for the hype man for others so can i be your hype man oh, sure sure so <laughs> so let's look for seeing you as the most successful youtuber oh. in the country thank if you. not the world thank you or the first youtuber which is to politics and gets mentored by piyush goel to that like is an interesting proposition <laughs> you got me there so let's go for mr alabadia joining politics yeah. soon and make an india richer cash money baby <laughs> Let's make the people of India richer. Yeah. How does that sound? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. If the people of India are rich, the country will be rich. Yeah. I've done enough geopolitical podcasts to understand that the game is actually money oriented, and I've done enough life podcasts to know that the game is secure yourself with money. That's my intention always as a YouTuber. That anyone watching this should gain value in one of the two directions: either help the country in some way or help your wallet in some way. It is important. And. Well, if you can help them get a purpose in life, both these dots will connect even better. Okay. Think about it. Little stumped, but <laughs> okay, fine. I'll think about it, and that's a great place to leave off this conversation. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You were very easy, very chill to talk to. Uh, you're my father's age, but what I will say is, I felt like I was talking to a big brother. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. much. All the best to you. Yeah, you too. kind of count this as a little bit of a career achievement i never thought i'll be bringing politicians on to trs because i always looked at the world of politics a little intensely i thought it would be too intense to talk to politicians and that stereotype that falls narrative kind of broke when i actually got to speak to the cabinet ministers that i spoke to trust me some incredible episodes are coming up thanks to my gov helping us crack these episodes trs is going to reach a new level i promise you lots more content coming up with politicians please give your feedback on this episode the political podcast have only just begun and finally i want to thank piyush goel sir made me feel very comfortable to be honest for the first time in a very long time i was slightly nervous as a podcaster but he helped in dissipating that nervousness just a tiny little bit lots of love to him lots of gratitude to him and lots of love and gratitude to you the viewer thanks for all your support trs is only just getting started